jing uh, start le lanang niya ka na. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, all right, uh, all the speakers are here. David, huh? Okay, okay then. Um, uh, Jutai to all. Uh, greetings on the occasion of uh, World Environment Day. On behalf of the Master Scholars League, I welcome you all to this online discussion on the environmental impact of Kopili Hydroelectric Project. Uh, the uh, Kopili Hydroelectric Project, as we all know, is located mainly in the Dimasa, uh, Dimahasau district of Assam, as well as the Karbi Anglong district. And uh, it is on the Kopili River and its Umrong tributary, which is largely located in Dimahasau only. It has been funded by the Asian Development Bank and is currently being developed by the Northeastern Electric Power Corporation Limited, or what we all know as NIPCO. It is a 275 megawatt project. And uh, once in operation, it is supposed to generate power, which will be supplied to all the states of Northeast India. And in today's discussion, what we aim to do is to highlight certain concerns regarding the feasibility of this project, uh, given the fact that the hill districts where this project will be situated are biodiversity hotspots. And with the majority population, largely tribal population, which is directly dependent on the forest resources for their livelihood, as well as their uh, cultural practices, uh, their religious beliefs. In fact, we can say uh, th the larger identity itself. Uh, this project, as what from what I've uh, read, it affects around 16 villages, 14 of which are in Dimahasau, and the other two are in Karbi and Long, if I'm not uh, uh, wrong. And uh, the other participants will obviously shed further light on all of that. Um, so in such a scenario, what we aim to do with this discussion is to bring out the concerns and the issues regarding not just the environmental cost of such a project, but also the human cost, the human cost of such developmental projects such as the uh, Kopili hydroelectric project. We've, be, we've seen this uh, developmental projects come up all over the country, everywhere there has been hue and cry. But when it comes to our region, when it comes to our state, when it comes to our districts, the problems, the issues of the uh, uh, human, uh, the, the issues of the population living out here, it's largely uh, not talked about. The issues are not raised. There is no awareness regarding it. So what we hope to do uh, by the end of this discussion today, we are hoping that uh, we'd be able to get some answers regarding uh, what the state as well as the communities and civil society, what we can keep in mind and what is to be done so that uh, this developmental projects as they are called, need not be at the huge cost of the annihilation <coughs> of ecology. And with this, uh, let me, with this brief introduction, let me introduce today's discussions. Uh, we have David Haflongbar, uh, he's, he's a member of the Massa Scholars League. And we have Josephine Lenny, uh, who's joined us from Australia. We have Dinesh Hanse of the Karbi Students Association of uh, Longku branch. And we have Ajit Pangcho, who is a resident of Longku village in Dimahasau. And along with Ajit, we also have another resident who is joining us from Longku. Uh, he is Mohan Singh Pangcho. And we are very happy to have all of you here with us today. Uh, we will begin with uh, David. Uh, we'll open this discussion with David. And um, David David Haflongbar is a member of the Master Scholars League, like, like I've already pointed out, and he's completed his MSc from Cotton University recently in geography, and he specializes in fluvial geomorphology. He has also recently been appointed assistant professor in one in a reputed college of Assam, so we are very happy about that. Uh, David, I guess, uh, will be speaking for about 20 minutes or so, and we can take uh, questions at the end of his pr uh, presentation presentation or uh, even after all the uh, speakers have presented, depending on the questions that come in during the course of the discussion. Uh, so with that, uh, it's over to you, David. Thank you. David? 
uh, you can unmute and uh, you can begin with okay, your presentation. Okay. Yes, yes. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Yes, uh, thank you, Raki Avi, uh, for warmly <laughs> introducing me. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Every one of you to this talk on the environmental impact of the uh, Copelia hydroelectric project. So uh, let me share my screen. So is it visible? Yes, it's yeah. visible. David. Okay, okay, I will start, okay. Okay, let us uh, start with the river Akopili, <laughs> which originated at Megalep too. So uh, <clears throat> its basin is bounded by the Jainta Hills in the west and the South Kachar and Mikir Hills in the east. So the major tributaries of Akopili are the Karkor, Mintreng, Dinar, Longku, Long, Longsom, Amring, Umrong, and Langkri. So after entering Assam, the Kopili separates the Karbi Anlok district from the Dima Hasau up to its contents with Diung River on its right at 135 kilometers. So the Kopili uh, electric project was the major venture of the NEPCO when it came into extent in the 1976 uh, during the Indira Gandhi government. So the Kopili uh, hydroelectric project um, is a 275 megawatt and has two dams one on the Kopili River and on one on its tributary Umrong. <clears throat> so the project was uh, developed by the NEPCO Northeast Electric Power Population Limited. So the first dam with uh, the uh, first one dam with 66 uh, meter height on the Kopili River is known as Kandong Dam, which is uh, 50 uh, megawatt. And the second one with a 30 meter height is known as the Kopili Dam, which is uh, 225 megawatt located at Umrong. So, and both uh, Kandong and the Kopili See the uh, catchment of the Kopili River basins. So, uh, so moving next to the impacts, uh, how the dam impacts the river. Um, so, uh, let me first uh, discuss about the dam uh, construction, the impact of dam construction on catchment ecology. <clears throat> So the construction of them result in physical, chemical, and biological change to nature ecosystem. So uh, changes in temperature and chemical composition and oxygen level and other properties are not suitable to the aquatic vegetation and animals that evolve within a river system. So the dam have led to the extinction of many fishes and aquatic animals, uh, disappearance of uh, birds, huge loss of forest, wetland, etc. Dam change and ecosystem to which all surrounding ecosystem have adopted. Dam construction nearly always reduce wildlife diversity. As we can see, there is no marine resources left in Kopili River as water is, uh, water is very high acidity due to open cast mining in the upper stream and the river is unfit for agriculture activities. So uh, let, uh, moving next to uh, impact of dam uh, construction on hydrology. So the river hydrology is a uh, huge impact as primarily uh, as it changes in uh, the river flow uh, magnitude and frequency. Uh, so ultimately producing new hydrological characteristics uh, differently significant from the previous natural flow. So some of the major impacts uh, of dams on the hydrology of the river are changes in the pattern of stream flow in terms of volume and seasonal variation and changes in the flood magnitude and frequency, changes in water quality, uh, loss of nutrients in water and modification of runoff and changes in the groundwater level. So the following summary, existing the water flow in the Kopili River Basin provided by the consulting team preparing the, preparing the IWRMP addressing existing quantity and uh, timing of water flows in the Kopili River Basin as evaluated from existing data. So flow computation have been carried out using the data from 1959 to 2000 with several years gave in data, the computed flows at the LK lower Kopila hydroelectric project site has three characteristics due to impact of the upstream uh, Kopila hydroelectric. So you can see the uh, project uh, between 1959 and 1983, it was a natural flow. And, and uh, during the transition period uh, from 1984 to 1996, the flow was 
Kopila Hydroelectric Project. And the post Kopila Hydroelectric Project, uh, which is from uh, 1997 to uh, till now, uh, the plots were affected by the poor operation of the uh, Kopila Hydroelectric Project. So moving uh, next to uh, impact of dam in uh, channel morphology. So the major uh, morphological changes caused by the dam construction include the changes in size, uh, cross-sectional area and pattern of the river and changes in drainage density, uh, changes in the erosional and depositional processes and its associated problems, uh, land subsidence and sedimentation in reservoir, uh, triggering of earthquake by the wake of river in the reservoir the loss of sediment supply to floodplain and coastal area uh, and increased slope instability around the reservoir due to changes in the water level. So uh, now the most important point, uh, valuable ecosystem. So uh, due to a construction of the dam, many ecosystem like water quality, water quantity and air quality and forest and forest resources all are affected. All are affected. So, uh, so moving uh, to water quality, uh, <clears throat> valuable economic compounds. So um, upstream illegal coal mining areas are generating acid mine drainage, uh, which has significantly uh, deteriorated water quality and aquatic ecology in the Kopali River. The AMD pollution from upstream illegal coal mining should be considered a cumulative impact when, when considered in conjunction with the water quality impact anticipated to be generated directly by the proposal lower Kopila hydroelectric project. So the lower Kopila hydroelectric project water quality impacts are described in detail in the web course uh, environmental impact assessment EIA for the LKBC project. And uh, so, uh, and the river is also facing the uh, acid mine drainage contamination. So uh, let us discuss. Uh, predominantly by the lower pH surface water drainage from illegal mining areas in West Assam and Meghalaya. The acid mine drainage uh, flows into the Karkar River, which mineral pirates uh, contain in the, coast, uh, in the coal deposit produce sulfuric acid upon exposure to air and water. A study conducted uh, by the Central Soil and Material Research Station, New Delhi, reported pH level at 2.8 to 3.3 in the Karkar River. This was confirmed that the samples collected by the consulting team during a site visit in January 2007 or 2017, sorry, uh, where pH in the Karkar was measured at 3.3 and 3.8 below. The confluence with the Karkar River as shown in table. So we can see in the table as the Karkar River upstream, which is the pH below uh, with 3.3 and uh, uh, so a pH is a measure of how acidic basic the water is. The, uh, <coughs> the range goes from zero to 14 with seven being neutral. And so moving next to air quality, uh, <coughs> valuable economic compound as a primary or direct impact, the proposed uh, uh, lower copula hydroelectric project will potentially emit methane, a great uh, a potent greenhouse gas that it is shown to contribute to global climate change from after filling. However, if the vegetation uh, is removed before the reservoir is filled, it will be generated in the form of carbon dioxide. In uh, addition, as a secondary or indirect impact, the project will supply up to 5% of the latent uh, electricity demand in Assam, which will support a proportionate ex extent of development in all sectors in um, AOC, domestic, industrial, uh, transport, etc. So uh, according to the PCBA report, state of environment, um, Assam ambient air and water quality to from 2009 to 2014, uh, Nagao had low um, sulfur dioxide and nitric dioxide level, but uh, suspended particulate matter and uh, RSPM level were high or critical every year. <laughs> so uh, the air quality index uh, conducted by the Nagao, uh, 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 conducted at Nagao station found that uh, air quality index of 139, which is uh, very poor air quality. So the uh, damage uh, of the land, forestry and ecology uh, due to dams construction include uh, the resources impact uh, zones relevant to the land, forest and ecology, uh, valuable economy dams, reservoir, and other LKHP facilities uh, uh, 
and infrastructure and the entire Kopoli River Basin from the perspective of project induced and non-project growth and development impacts on surface water runoff and soil erosion and consequent impacts of land, forest, and ecology degradation. As the primary or direct impact, the proposed LKHPC uh, project will result in the loss, trout clearing, or degradation of approximately uh, 524 hectares. River plus trout steep sided valley from the existing Kopili hydroelectric project area down to the Panimu forest gas house below which the topography is less steep. Uh, the dewatered section in this steep side valley, which is not inhabited and not used for agriculture. So uh, at full speed, the reservoir will rise above the valley walls and extend onto the right bank of the river. This extended reservoir area and the right bank of the river adjacent to the dewatered section will be permanently altered by the construction of the dam powerhouse and other facility, as well as the seasonal rise and fall of the reservoir level. Outside of the main channel river, the reservoir area will expand and with flow. So uh, now moving next to the proposed, uh, proposed lower Kopili hydroelectric project. So the uh, lower hydroelectric project is one of the proposed multi-stage development. Uh, lower Kopili project is coming up in Borolongku village in Dimahasau district. The project is developed by Assam APGCL, Assam Power Generation Corporation Limited. So the lower Kopili dams will be a concrete gravity dam with 70.13 meter high dam wall. Kopili hydroelectric project has been prepared by APGCL, including an environmental impact assessment as per the government of India requirement. So the, the draft EIA report has been re, uh, revived by the AVD and existing issue. Uh, where identify which required action of APGCL before the project can be funded under the investment program. These issues include low pH in the Kopili River, Kandong, and Umbrang reservoirs, contributing to degrades of the existing Kopili hydro hydroelectric project, short corrosion of the metallic components of the facilities. And the next one, a draft environmental impact assessment prepared by the WAPOS October 20 request three additional components in order to finalize a cumulative uh, impacts assessment and integrative water management plan and water quality restoration plan, including a mitigation strategy. And, uh, uh, and cumulative impact assessment need to update uh, lower populist site characterization, including surface drainage, volume, and existing wetlands. And the further identification of surface drainage and impact and mitig uh, mitigations of uh, remediation and plan needed, including pilot study for anoxic li limestone drains as a treatment option. So comprehensive surface water treatment system need to be designed and implemented based on the above investigation assessment. So uh, after totally going through the um, pre-feasibility report and the form one of the proposed uh, ESC should not give the terms of reference clearance to the project without satisfactory resolution of this includes, which includes uh, them, uh, which includes like them into flood. So uh, experience of the people living in the downstream suggests that the flood um, had become more uh, recurrent after construction of the dam. Like, uh, the flood of 2004, out of 140 revenue village of Kampur Circle of Nagao District, 132 were affected by floods with area of 135.12 square miles. Due to this flood, 192,000 people were temporarily displaced. These floods also took the lives of poor people. Even Open had confirmed that the main reason for the devastation in this Nagao and Morigao district was the release of the water from the Nepo Kopili projects. And the spillway uh, capacity project. As per the free feasibility report, the design spillway uh, capacity and so, uh, and the acid uh, contamination due to the open cast mining threatens uh, viability of lower Kopili river. So acid contamination due to open cast mining uh, threatens viability uh, of lower Kopili. The acidic mine discharge in the upper reaches of the Kopili catchment is uh, posing a serious threat uh, to the existing Kopili hydroelectric project. PFR uh, states that acid mine discharge has been reported to cause constant erosion, corrosion of the, uh, of the critical hydrocore equipment leading to the frequent uh, outages of the power plant under Kopili hydroelectric project. So experts said that the burst of the pen stock in, um, is due to the corrosion. So uh, PFR overlooked uh, Kopili line fall. Uh, so uh, uh, the Kopili 
basin is uh, ge geologically inactive, so uh, which is a very uh, risk for the uh, construction of dam. So during the last 40 years, uh, the, uh, the Kopili region with uh, more than uh, seven Richter scale. So uh, it is very uh, risk uh, uh, called so, uh, and next, moving next to issue travel and relation, the project authority have stated that the 620 acres that will be submerged due to the project consists of a medium to high density vegetations, scrub, often and barren land, except but demand. So people have expressed their fear, uh, their fears of not getting proper rehabilitation. The project seems to ignore this. Also for the stating the submerged land as government land, uh, because the land holding may not same as the fertile land beside the area which uh, has been considered for the construction of the dam is inhabited by the Dimasa people, which mainly dependent on the system of shifting cultivation. It is to be noted that in shifting cultivation, years, uh, a cultivator cannot exercise permanent ownership over the land. And defining other forests. So um, the project will also submerge 65 hectares cultivation land in the same item. Uh, it's mentioned that um, an area of 585 hectares will be submerged, and this area has been mentioned as memorandum submitted uh, jointly by the Kirby Student Kirby Student Association and Somidar Kirby uh, Imai and Kirby Nimso Chintur Asong uh, to the State Power Minister uh, Prajut Bordoloi. The association demand plus preference uh, in terms of employment should be given to. Dam building companies is very poor in this regard. The local people uh, did uh, not get promise uh, employment and other benefits in the Kopeli project, which came up in 1970, 1980s, and 1990. So, association, Kirby uh, Students Association, and Senior Tularam Club called a 48 hours Umran so done, seeking a 60% of technical and non technical posts in the project should be reserved for the local. Tribal populace, 100% uh, reservation for, uh, for the local tribal youth for grade three and grade four posts, uh, free electricity for local, free treatment facilities in the uh, run hospital, and so on. This is a very crucial issue, but surprisingly, it finds no place in the PFR document. So, issue need to be included in EIA in, uh, report. So, since several critical issues were not included in the previously submitted documents, so uh, SAMDRP had listed um, uh, out of the following issue, uh, which will be included in the environmental impact assessment study of the proposed lower couple hydroelectric so without detail analysis of this issue. Environmental impact assessment cannot be considered as complete. So downstream impact assessment. So downstream impact assessment is the burning problem in Assam. The state, the state has already witnessed a huge protest against them due to the lack of proper um, impact assessment. The environmental impact assessment document should do a proper downstream impact assessment in order to do a short downstream impact assessment. And the downstream impact assessment should specifically uh, specifically focus on the impact of the dam on fisheries and livelihood of the people who are condition and impact of change in geomorphological issue, change in groundwater research, uh, among others. The environmental impact assessment should find which section of the people will be affected the most by the dam and how to compensate. Uh, reported that the bank erosion by the Kopli River has increased after the construction of the dam. Uh, the environmental impact reports of lower Kopli hydroelectric project should do all the impact uh, of the new project of the river bank erosion. So impact picking a power uh, operation. So uh, environmental impact assessment should do a detailed analysis of the impact of the picking power operation during nine months. In months, the river stretch downstream from powerhouse will have very little water for most hours of the day with certain flows in the river only a few hours. So this is a several uh, socio-economic impacts along with issue of the safety of the people and their um, uh, and their livestock in this stretch of the river. Therefore, the environmental impact assessment should do a detailed assessment of impact of the peaking power generation. So moving next to assessment of optimum reservoir duration, the environmental impact assessment should do an assessment to prepare an optimum reservoir operation plan for the project in order to minimize downstream impact uh, if a disaster occurred. And moving next to impact of seal management operation. 
<coughs> so environmental impact assessment should include detailed analysis in pick of changing seal uh, flow and downstream from the uh, desilting chamber from seal flushing in monsoon on the downstream area. A detail and trod optional option assessment. The environmental impact should do the trod uh, option assessment for the project. There can be several other cost effective options for power corporation operation. A recent example of proposed 1000 megawatt solar power generation in Rajasthan has shown that uh, for one megawatt install capacity, only two hectares of land is required. And the cost per megawatt install capacity will be 7.5 cores, and the, and the electricity will be provided at rupees 6.5 per unit. And the main problem, which is a ground uh, water depletion in the downstream area. So people in downstream of the Kopili Dam have reported that there has been a depletion of ground water in the downstream areas of the Kopili Dam. Uh, from a field visit done in the downstream area of Kopili Dam, it was reported that the ground stream level at certain area had reduced to 140 feet. Rivers like Borapani, Kopili, and Nisari dry up in the winters, affecting the winter cultivator. Beside wetlands, which are known as Bill or Char, Bill or Duba, locally had uh, disappeared. So the reduction of groundwater can also be due to uh, reduced groundwater reaches due to dam impact of dam on groundwater reaches should be a part of the environmental impact assessment study. And uh, moving next to impacts of tunneling and blasting. The environmental impact should analyze the impact of tunneling and blasting as these activities can increase in risk of landslide and disaster in a hilly area. And uh, moving next to intake of mining, the project will require large quantity of sand cores and fine granules and boulder. These are likely to be mined for the nearby areas. The environmental impact assessment should include a st uh, study on the impacts of mining on the uh, people as well as on the local environment. Mining for the project will be done in the nearby areas and it will have severe impact on people as well as on the river, biodiversity, hills, flora and fauna and aquatic biodiversity, etc. So the study of the impact of mining should include all these activities, like the impact of backwash, uh, backwater effect and the detail water courses and other water bodies, and and, and impact of climate change. Uh, development banks, government and policy, the government of India, the settlement and the indigenous people plan has been prepared for the lower Kopili hydroelectric. Uh, project for rehabilitating the affected people land required under the various components are so you can see the project components and the area so the reservoir alone take the 552 uh, hectares of lands and with total uh, 1573 uh, 1, area uh, hectares and uh, land acquired from the two district is detailed out as below from Dimahasau uh, forest land uh, 475 hectares and revenue land 909, uh, total uh, 1387 hectares. From Karbi Hanlao, forest land, uh, it covers uh, 45 and 190. And we can see the number of households affected by the land acquisition for the project district. Uh, both, uh, between the, uh, you can compare uh, the mass as well as Karbi Hanlao. If we're economically displaced, the, the mass has uh, 1000. Uh, five, 1582 and economically and physically displaced it is 18. So total it is uh, 1600 from Karbi and Long uh, uh, to 31 and economically and physically displaced there is no uh, there is a zero in Karbi and Long. So total it is uh, 1831 uh, <clears throat> number of household affected by land acquisition for the report. So location and affected village. So we can see the uh, some of the village which is affected uh, by the um, Lower uh, Kopila hydroelectric project. Those villages are uh, so uh, under the Jimbra block of Dimasau. The village like Digram, Disha, Boro Lanku, so, uh, Dima Lanku, which is uh, totally submerged village, and uh, Sokuru, uh, Chota Lanku, Chota Lanku, Losu, Dishabra, Hapir Disha, etc. And from Karpelo, there is only two villages, Cherin, Tefi, and Langsompet. So the project affected a 16 village with uh, 1,831 uh, uh, tribal household. It physically displaced uh, 18,000 household. The project will acquire 1,557 hectares of land, of which two thirds are leaseholds, and the remaining of lands are state forest. The project is a non cadastral area. There is no water or revenue records are available other than the data, uh, data on the lease and the parcel of equation will affect the 1831 household of them 18 our household will be physically displaced so uh so the topic dams in uh, lower copula hydroelectric project 
the issue of environment and livelihood security. So the concept of livelihood security encompasses not just a steady flow of income, but also needs to be evaluated in the wider context of ensuring a safe and sustainable environment and preservation of the social and cultural identity. The people residing near Kopilia are mostly defeated on agriculture festival like Bushu Dima of the Dimasas and Rongpere uh, of the Kirby's, which are basically agriculture related festivals and the rituals observed during these festivals reflect a perfect fusion of the rich cultural heritage of the ethnic communities and also an expression of the solidarity and the lifestyle of the ethnic communities and uh, and also an exception of the solidarity and the lifestyle of the people of the area. Economic, poverty, and socially are closely interlinked and collectively responsible for ensuring livelihood security of the communities. Amid such linkage, it becomes increasingly important to understand any development programs in the totality, in the totality of its impact of the economy, poverty, and society of the region. Dams being uh, not an exception, as an engineering project, construction of them definitely opens up opportunity uh, for employment to many directly or indirectly, but at the same time, more pertinent issue needs to be analyzed like loss of lives and property due to submergent displac uh, displacements of lo local communities from their ancestral land, as well as the downstream impact like flood and destroying livelihood, water, acidity, etc. So, the memorandum on behalf of uh, KSA, SKA, Apex Board, and General Public of Longku and Umangsu under 17 Grampan name MSC Constitution Dimaso stated that the 150 megawatt lower copy. They were uh, delighted to know that the project will be undertaken by the uh, APCCL. It will be a major boost toward the development of industry and work of the people of the area. But at the same time, they will also be awarded into the grievance of the people to be affected as a consequence of the dam construction. So the Dam will submerge a large area covering several hectares of cultivable land, village, forest, and other private properties. It will also subsequently alter the general habitats of the people, mainly Dimasas, Karbis, Garo, etc., who have settled there from time immemorial. So, uh, lastly, therefore, they requested to look into the grievance and implement. Uh, they are following demands like compensation, rehabilitation, employment, contracts, works, and supply, CSR, and D, uh, scheme, implementation of RGG, uh, VUI, scheme, support, communication. The local people did not get promised employment and other benefits uh, in the public project, which came up in 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s. On 20 March 2012, the Dimasa Student Union, Dimasa Welfare Association, Kirby Student Association, and Senior Tulum. Club call a 14 hours of workshop on seeking 60% of technical and non-technical posts in the project should be uh, reserved for the local um, tribal population, 100% reservation for the local tribal youth for grade three and grade four posts, free electricity for local um, free treatment facility in the Nepal run hospitals and so on. Uh, this is very crucial issue, but surprisingly it find no place in the uh, free feasibility report documents. So that's all, thank you. Uh, David, you can uh, stop the screen sharing. Okay, okay. Wait. All right. Okay, thank you so much, David, for that uh, uh, highly detailed assessment of. Uh, uh, the Kopili hydroelectric project. Uh, you gave us an entire, uh, the, the entire idea from the very beginning as to uh, the, the uh, geographical and the other, uh, uh, you know, impact that is, uh, that is, uh, that was begin uh, the, Yeah, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, David, for the detailed uh, presentation. Um. Uh, what uh, I are there any comments or queries in the comment section? Okay. There are. Uh, 
compliments given to David. Uh, I think that was a very detailed presentation on the impact, the environmental impact that was, uh, you know, that uh, uh, of the uh, hydroelectric project itself, and then uh, the physical impact as well as what kind of impact it will have uh, in the future, and especially on the local communities. I think what I assessed uh, from your presentation was that uh, I think there have been glaring uh, omissions in uh, even in the assessments made by the environmental impact assessment and even given the uh, policy of the Asian Development Bank regarding their concerns for the uh, local communities uh, regarding compensation and rehabilitation I think still uh, there were a lot of omissions and then I think many a times uh, the local communities, uh, the lo local communities' wishes and their demands were not given the kind of uh, 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 you know attention that it requires. Given that the maximum impact will be on the local flora and fauna and the local communities, I think that has that can be still taken up. And I think there are grievance redressal mechanisms. I think uh, if uh, the uh, other presenters can highlight that, I think that would be really nice because we are just not addressing the problem here and not just discussing the situation that is uh, right now going on in the districts uh, regarding the Kopili hydroelectric project but also we are trying to look at what possible solutions we can arrive at so thank you David once again for that wonderful presentation I think if we don't have any comments uh, mm -hmm. we can uh, or perhaps we can wait for the comments and we can take uh, uh, queries and comments at the very end also after all the present have uh, 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 you know uh, done with their uh, presentation. We'll move on to our next speaker. Uh, her name is Josephine Lenny. We are very happy to have uh, Josephine Lenny, who is an environmental management student at the Australian National University. She also has a degree in social work and she has experience in working with the uh, indigenous communities in Tamil Nadu earlier. And right now she's uh, uh, taken up this project of uh, studying the uh, impact, the environmental uh, impact of the uh, Kopili, lower Kopili hydroelectric project. So I think without uh, further ado, we'll move on to our next presenter. Uh, so over to you, Josephine. Hello. Hi. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. Um, this is a bit of an um, interesting situation for me, and I feel really grateful to be invited. Um, I'm definitely not an expert on this topic, but I did contact um, the Scholars League um, because I noticed the impact that the, the dam was going to have on um, communities and an environment. Um, so I just, I guess I contacted you to get some further information for my studies that I was doing and then to be invited um, was a real kind of privilege. So I'm definitely not an expert, but I have done some research over the past couple of weeks and I'm happy to share that with you um, and also happy to hear your feedback as well. Um, so yeah, I guess I can share my screen. Um, and then, yeah, if you want to ask any questions, feel free to put it in the chat or, um, or if I get if I get anything wrong, put it in the chat too because I'm not familiar with Assam or the area um, or your experiences. So it'd be great to hear your experiences. Um, oh no, can I share? I just have to give myself permission to share the screen. Sorry. Um, Zoom, yes. You have to unmute yourself, Josephine. You've uh, yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. just um. Okay, the green button at the bottom of your screen, like you know, there should be a green button saying share screen. 
Um, yeah, I've never had this issue. One second, I think because it's recording, it's a bit different. Sorry. Maybe I can try and share from my phone instead. Might be better. Okay. Okay, I have to quit and reopen. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Hello, uh, hello. This is Sivraj, and uh, I'm also uh, really happy to see the presentation by David. And uh, one thing that I have in my mind that I wanted to ask you is that uh, the data and the information that you have provided are those from like uh, what were the sources of those uh, data? Like I think most of them like uh, were from government uh, impact assessment data only and i think some of them were like collected by your group is it is it true or like what were the sources of uh, the data that you have presented in the presentation that i wanted to ask david yes hello yeah please uh yes uh so uh, the data uh, i have found is uh, from the apgcl pro which is uh, assam power generation uh, corporation limited so wait uh, one second, huh? uh, Joseph is calling me. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. So I have found the data uh, from the uh, APGCL uh, websites. And, and it's a uh, government data. Okay, okay. And, uh, and you have also mentioned like, okay, uh, Josephine is here. We can yes, later on. Yes, Josephine. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. Um, I worked out how to share my screen, so I'll share it now. I'm really sorry about that. Um, so we'll go back to, okay. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Great, cool. Um, okay, so I have, um, there might be a little bit of double up with what David talked about. And I wanted to also say thanks to David for um, kind of, talking to me and helping me with this project um, and helping me kind of push me along with things. Um, so I, I might touch on some of the things that um, David said as well, but I guess I've had, my project was to look at the um, environmental impact assessment um, and do an analysis of the impact assessment um, and look at gaps in the impact assessment, which um, I think we all realize there are many um, in terms of how the um, how environmental and community issues may have may be overlooked. Um, so I had a little look at it from the um, from the framework of um, the from the framework of the integrated environmental assessment. Um, so I don't know if anyone is aware of the, um, uh, familiar with the integrated environmental assessment, um, but I, I guess I had a little look at some of the, sorry, I'm just trying to get my internet working. Australian internet is not very good, which you would think it should be, but it's not good at all. <laughs> um, sorry, sorry, everyone.
Well, I guess I might just start anyway. I might just talk um, about the slides while, so that I don't keep you all waiting um, and see if I can get my internet, um, internet working. Um, so I guess what I had a look at um, is I had a look at the integrated environmental assessments um, and in integrated environmental, the UN um, environmental, uh, sorry. It's fine. It's, it's the same here also. <laughs> it's okay. Um, you can start. Yeah. So I guess what I had a look at uh, is the um, a range of different issues related to the um, integrated environmental assessment. So I looked at um, the displacement of communities um, and... No. None of... This is working. Okay. Um, uh, before I started, I just wanted to, um, okay, it's working now. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I'm not going to yes. expand it because I, I'm worried that it's not going to work. Um, so I'll just leave it as is. Um, so I guess in Australia, um, before we start a presentation, um, and I've missed this at the beginning, but we usually um, do an acknowledgement of country. So that's just an acknowledgement that I'm um, speaking to you on the stolen lands of the original custodians, um, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations. Um, and in this process, we pay respect to elders past, present and emerging. Um, and this is a, um, I, maybe some of you are familiar, but this is a kind of general practice um, in Australia to just acknowledge the Aboriginal people um, and Torres Strait Islander people that um, lived in Australia for and have had continuing cultures for many, many years. Um, so... The integrated environmental assessments um, encourage a use of evidence-based tools such as ecosystem services, scenario planning, um, and incorporation of sustainable development goals. Um, so I use these tools because I think that the EIA um, emitted a lot of um, a lot of factors that could have contributed really positively to. Um, doing a really holistic assessment and, and really kind of looking at how the project is going to impact community and biodiversity. Um, so integrated environmental assessments um, can enable exploration of a range of elements, um, including future and historical issues um, related to the project on um, global, national and subnational levels. Um, and they, the integrated environmental assessment might look at environmental change, societal well-being, habitat, species, um, and ecological, physical, and chemical processes. So I think um, in terms of the EIA, there are many elements that um, have been missed out as we, as David kind of touched on. Um, so overall, I, my research just explored um, the impact of hydroelectric projects, not just um, the, the Lower Copley project, but I guess internationally and also within, within India as well. Um, so hydroelectric pro projects, um, as many of us know, um, have an impact on a range of spheres, um, including economic, environmental, um, social, cultural, and spiritual life. Um, and and globally, disproportionately, these effects um, are fall on Indigenous communities. Um, I, there's some really interesting um, literature that has come out of India around, um, as well, the intersection between um, gender and um, the hydro 
hydropower development organizations and how um, women um, are often left out of the hydropower um, projects and that the, the hydropower projects can really um, exacerbate existing inequality. Um, this is something that is not looked at in the EIA um, very deeply at all, um, which for me seems quite concerning. Um, and also the, um, the resettlement and development plan focuses predominantly on monetary compensation. Um, as it should, um, but it also, but the kind of compensate, the compensation may overlook some elements um, such as the land area, um, the shifting cultivation and the fact that um, there is some form of informal land ownership that um, people, families, communities um, may not get compensation for this land and this loss, um, as well as gender issues. So there's a whole a whole lot of stuff that I, I think has been missed out, which um, I we could probably sit here and talk all day about a big list of different things. Um, so some of the things that I've kind of looked at and in detail um, in the in the consent seeking consultations, there have been extensive concerns raised about the access to forests to maintain traditional tribal li livelihoods. As um, Rakhi mentioned and, and David mentioned, um, there have, have been ongoing um, extensive concerns raised, um, but in the EIA, um, the, um, there is a conflicting message and it states that the livelihood of the local people will not be affected by the project and the project will also support livelihood programs. So that is in the response to community concerns um, in the consent seeking consultation section of the EIA. So um, of course there is the combined resettlement and tribal development plan, but um, I think if you look at the fact that it's saying actively the livelihood of the local people will not be affected by the project, that kind of, um, potentially suggests that the seriousness um, of the impacts may not be taking it may not be taken seriously um, by the um, the power company by APGCL. So um, within the EIA, um, justification of the project is generally based under economic goals. So um, of course, um, hydroelectric projects pr create a, a whole lot of jobs for a, a lot of people. Um, and they also, in this project, um, there is a lack of power in Assam and um, many industries will be supported, um, which the idea is to contribute to economic development. Um, of course, this is, um, I mean, I'm speaking from an Australian context where we are you know, very privileged and, and have access to a lot of resources. And I'm aware that um, the, the levels of inequality and um, access to electricity and, um, and general kind of resources for every aspect of the community is very kind of unequal. Um, but also, I guess, um, the EIA's focus on the predominantly economic goals um, may overlook um, past and present risks um, for the project. So, for example, um, an analysis of alternatives, which David also touched on, um, it, it doesn't really go into much detail of alternatives. And it's also important to note that this was done, this, um, the report was done a number of years ago and it's been amended over a period of years and published in 2018. Um, but alternative re renewable technologies are becoming um, increasingly more accessible, um, such as solar power, um, which is potentially a viable alternative. Um, there was a study done by Kumar um, et al. Um, this year, which said that uh, tea industry in Assam may be supported by solar power and that this is a viable option. Um, so there are alternatives to to that may cause less damage to the environment that haven't been the, the environment and also communities that haven't been explored in depth um, as an alternative to the project. 
Um, I also had a look at a kind of more global scale. Um, so the, I don't know, the, well, I had a little look at the kind of planetary boundaries, which can be seen in this picture. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it kind of talks about the, these boundaries of the world um, and how um, a human activity is kind of increasing and we're, we're kind of at the tipping point of um, potential kind of catastrophic impacts as we're already seeing with, with climate change and um, increased degradation of environment. Um, there is, uh, has been a good study um, by Roy and Pramanak that has um, discussed ways in which India may broach a number of these planetary boundaries and the, the hydroelectric project um, can, may contribute to some of these kind of general overall issues such as um, land system change, which is a, a significant issue and a tipping point. Um, so the loss of forest um, may can kind of contribute to increased, um, I don't know, ecological catastrophes. Um, so biodiversity and endangered animal impacts. So um, the EIA effectively identifies a range of information from local people, including their knowledge related to endangered Asian elephants and critically endangered um, Chinese pangolins in the area. So the area um, in the community consultations, it was very clear that these animals are in the area. Um, and they are endangered and critically endangered. Um, the supplementary kind of EIAs identify that, that the project will cause um, increased distress to these endangered populations. Now, I'm just focusing on the endangered populations, but there's also um, a whole lot of different species that are being impacted by this project um, due to the kind of submersion and, and also the risk um, also, I guess, the risk to the um, downstream flow, the, the downstream flow, and also the, I guess, the disaster risk. Um, but in the EIA, the, it, it states the, pro the proposed project does not affect important species um, and divide biodiversity areas, both upstream and downstream. Um, so this is another interesting example um, similar to the one I stated about the community impacts um, of how the EIA overlooks um, maybe the severity of some of the issues that um, people um, and biodiversity kind of are facing from this project um, and the severity of the impacts. So I guess um, as a kind of solution to these issues, um, I in terms of grievance mechanisms, I, I did have a little look over some of the grievance mechanisms in place um, for the ADB, the Asian Development Bank, and there are different processes that you can follow. Um, I'm aware that some of the people that are impacted in the communities um, are illiterate or may not kind of have access to these complex systems. Um, such as the different procedures that the ADB requires. I, I could be wrong with that and let me know if I am incorrect. Um, but I guess the grievance mechanisms seem to be quite um, convoluted and complex in terms of um, the bureau bureaucratic process. Um, although I think that their grievances could be addressed. And um, I guess if, if, that is something that anyone wants to follow up. I'm happy to kind of contribute um, if it does come up to kind of supporting people or communities with the grievance process, um, I guess, as a student and as a, someone that speaks English as my first language and um, I've got some spare time. So I just wanted to put that out there um, in terms of grievances. Um, another kind of element to the EIA that has been overlooked is ecosystem services. So um, within the EIA, um, it, it stated that there is no ecosystem services of great importance in the area um, because of the um, acidity of the water. Um, and the, the acidity of the water is a theme that comes up quite a lot in the EIA in terms of 
um, it seems to justify the the dam going ahead and the fact that there the water is already acidic um, and thus there are no there's there's no biodiversity there's no systems that are being really impacted because of the acidity of the water but if we do look at the community consultation and also you would all know that um, <laughs> that there is a very significant importance of the land for um, com communities um, and families that are being uh, displaced um, and and villages that are being submerged and traditional livelihoods that are being, um, I guess, just uh, I don't want to say the word decimated, but really, really, really strongly impacted. Um, so that is a area of concern as well. Um, in terms of ecosystem services, um, I'm not sure if I don't want to kind of say anything that you don't already know, but um, the ecosystem services are, are um, another group of resources separate to economic systems, um, which benefit people and communities. And there's been a number of studies done on ecosystem services that suggest that um, most development projects, um, such as even hydroelectric dams, are not... Um, the ecosystem services in the affected area where the land is being converted. So in this case, the forest is being converted into the dam. Um, in most situations, the value of the ecosystem services um, in the area is higher than the value that will be brought by the conversion of the land. Um, some of my lecturers have discussed this quite a lot and they use ecosystem services when um, discussing arguments against um, some projects, although it may not be relevant for this, but I think it's still important to discuss. So um, decision-making processes often ignore ecosystem services due to the lack of value placed on these resources. Um, so that could be said for this environmental impact assessment. I don't think that it places value on the importance of um, the cultural values of the area for communities. Um, the supporting kind of um, services like nutrient cycle, water cycling, um, even just the forest and the biodiversity within the forest, um, the upholding of um, endangered species and things like that. Um, provisioning, so that's things such as food, um, food, fiber, natural medicines. Um, the EIA did note um, economically significant plants and herbal plants. And there are a lot of, um, of course, as you know, that there is significant value to the, um, the biodiversity and the communities, um, but that hasn't been assessed at all in the EIA and it's it's essentially completely overlooked in the EIA is the value of the um, the land that's being going to be submerged to the people and the communities and to the environment. Um, so in summary, I guess the balance to create energy security while promoting biodiversity and environmental sustainability continues to be a challenge. Um, and that can only be addressed through understanding intricacies of whole systems. Um, exploration of the historical context of hydropower dams highlights their disproportionate displacement of tribal communities. Um, and so community input is vital. And I, I say um, it, it seems as though there has been the, the ADB's processes have been followed uh, um, in theory, but I think it would be I think that the community, it would be, if the communities, um, I think, I guess, it's important for communities to um, demand what they're entitled to and also to, um, I guess, challenge and push for a set proper compensation, especially for um, future generations, which is something I haven't discussed in this, but um, the compensation it process, a lot of it kind of is over a few years and then it stops. Um, so I guess in terms of compensation, looking at um, 
um, I don't know, community trusts and things like that, that organisations may um, maybe may put into. So I guess like, um, yeah, the kind of community trusts for the social corporate responsibility. I'm not sure of the ins and outs of the plans for that for the project, but um, I think it's really important to think about future generations as well and how they may, may be impacted by the project. Um, also, the decommissioning of the project is not discussed at all in the EIA. Um, so I guess, yeah, I've kind of talked about the global issues um, impacting the project, but I think that is important because I think that gives um, even more weight to the importance of really being critical about projects such as this hydroelectric dam. Um, and ecosystem identification of ecosystem services may reframe dominant economic perspectives to holistically understand value of natural and social resources. So I think um, as well as that kind of the ec economic side of things, I think um, the project really needs to address and respect um, the natural and, and social resources that are being impacted by the, the project and give compensation and community support um, where it's due. Um, I think that that's all I have, but I hope that that was okay. And if you've got any questions or feedback, that would be great. And like I said, I'm really happy to research a little bit more if you have any other questions or queries, because I'm a student, I have some time on my hands and I think um, this is a really um, important issue. Um, so yeah, if I, I mean, I've only got so much time, but I'd, I'd love to help out if I can with anything. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Josephine. I think uh, uh, that was a wonderful presentation. It was uh, brief and yet it was uh, very, very comprehensive. I'm sure the audience here today has, uh, you know, got a lot of information from you. I mean, I think you don't give yourself enough credit when you say that, okay, I mean, uh, this is not something that I, I'm, I, I'm the one to be telling you this, but I think, you know, you gave us a lot of insights and I hope that that will go a long way because um, uh, we have a few more uh, presenters, uh, you know, who were actually uh, in my earlier discussions with them, uh, this concerns regarding, okay, the project has already been commissioned, the money has already been deployed. So what is to be done? All these questions were there, you know, from the local communities. And I think you have uh, uh, highlighted a lot of uh, possible solutions as well as larger concerns. I mean, uh, basically, we should not see this as a problem that is local. I mean, it's not localized. I mean, uh, the project might be here in Dimahasau or Karbiang Long District, which is already a like, you know, it's a, it's a peripheral region, even within the state of Assam, but then the impact of it will be felt globally. And I think you brought that out wonderfully with the, your uh, uh, discussion on uh, ecosystem services and planetary boundaries, which itself is like, you know, which are, which are quite new to me. I'm sure a lot of the audience here have gained a lot of insights from your presentation. And also thank you for that wonderful uh, homage uh, to the uh, Wurundjeri people of the Kulin nations at the very beginning that you put out there. I think, you know, uh, uh, one con indigenous community, uh, community to another, I think it really means a lot, uh, especially in a, uh, in a world today where indigenous communities are uh, hardly given any regard or respect. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of issues. We already know that. So anyway, uh, Josie, uh, uh, thank you so much for the presentation. And uh, we look forward to further discussions uh, with mm -hmm. you regarding mm -hmm. this project. And not just this project, a lot of other concerns, environmental concerns, we look forward to that. And uh, so we have other presenters coming in. Uh, from Lonku village itself, and I hope that they'll be able to reach out to you. I hope this 
so this discussion that we are having today. The idea was to raise awareness, share information, as well as be able to help each other out, right? We might be sitting in different corners of the world, but yet reach out to each other. So I hope that accomplishes this. Uh, thank you so much, Josie, once again. So with that, I think and no, we'll take the questions and comments at the end. I think we'll move on to our next presenters who are, uh, uh, Dinesh, are you there? Uh, or have you, he texted me earlier because I, you know, he has been having some internet issue. Let me check. Uh, Dinesh, Dinesh is, uh, is the education secretary of Carby Students Association of Longku branch. And he's a resident of Longku. He's been very active with the uh, community uh, uh, at the local level there regarding the concerns of uh, the environmental impact of the hydroelectric project, Kopili hydroelectric project. Uh, if Dinesh, I don't see you in the participants, uh, we can wait for Dinesh to join us later. I guess uh, Ajit Pancho, who is also a resident of Longku, he is also here with us. Ajit is an activist, as and along with Ajit, another colleague of his who is also uh, the principal of a local school there, and he's been very active with the uh, Karbi students and the Car uh, Karbi civil so uh, society organizations in Longku area. And they'll be giving us firsthand information and experience of what uh, has happened regarding the, uh, uh, the hydroelectric project and uh, what is the current situation out there. So well, Ajit, if you are there, you can, uh, because I don't see Dinesh, I think we can proceed to Ajit. Ajit, if you're there, you can unmute yourself and uh, you can begin with your presentation. Ajit or Mohan Singh, either of you, uh, uh, would be extremely uh, happy to hear from you. Josie, you can uh, stop uh, uh, your screen sharing. Hello, hello. Yes, yes. Yes, Mohan Singh. Welcome, welcome. Uh, hello, ma'am. Yes, yes, please. Uh, hello, I already you introduced there, you. If Yes, yes, I'm here. I already introduced you. Uh, if uh, anything that I have missed out, you can introduce yourself again, and you can share your experiences regarding the lower hydroelectric project and that of the residents of Longku with us. We'd be extremely uh, grateful to hear from you. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Okay, first of all, I personally thanks for inviting me on the auspicious day of World Environment Day. Madam, ma'am, are you listening? Yes, yes, yes. You're audible. Okay, Continue. Continue. Okay. Okay. Uh, I would like to share something. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, ma'am. Eight years ago, a meeting was arranged and conducted by the team of Asian Development Bank. Okay. So on. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Please, yes, you're audible. audible. You're audible. Mohan Singh, you're audible. Okay. Please continue. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, eight years ago, a meeting was arranged and conducted by the Asian Development Bank to discuss on various issues related to environment impact. At that time, one of the environmental specialists, uh, she was from India, her name was uh, Sunabir Durani, and plus one from America. Uh, now I don't know uh, his name, but at that time they came and visited us at the affected areas. At that time, she put one question. At that time, she put, and she was raised and put various questions at that time. And he put one question. When the hydro projects comes in Longku, where the affected people will go? But at that time, none of the affected people replied the exact answer. So they only things of compensation. 
they are not thinking of the social, economic, class, religious, and cultural lifestyle. They are only thinking at that time about the compensation. So I want to put one question to JC Ma'am. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Okay. I want to put one. Uh, I want to put one questions to JC Ma'am that the construction is already started by the APGCL, but still many local affected people not getting the compensation, but the project is started. So in such situation, what we have to do, ma'am? Shall we stop the project or we don't have a rights to stop that project? I want to put uh, these questions to Jesse, ma'am. Is Hello? that for me? Is that for me? Yes, yes, ma'am. Ah, okay. Um, well, I guess I can have a little look at the grievance mechanisms. I believe that you have the right to um, give feedback, but it, it sounds like, I mean, I'm so sorry to hear that, and it sounds like um, they've, in terms of the EIA and in terms of the project, they haven't... Um, what I was reading is correct and they have just been focusing on compensation and a lot of families have um, been overlooked. Um, I, can, I can do a little bit of research into the um, what, what kind of process or what rights that you have. I think you, a lot of it would be based on some of the, the law in India um, and the kind of conventions on, I think there's some conventions on tribal rights and things like that, but I'd have to look into that a little bit more, but I can, I can look if you'd like, I'm, I'm no expert, but I'm happy to help. <laughs> that doesn't answer uh, your question. Uh, another question I would like to put. Hello, ma'am. Hi. Hello. Uh, yes, uh, uh, hello. Uh, Mohan Singh, uh, actually, like, you know, we can take the queries at the end, uh, your queries, we can, I mean, we, at the uh, very end, we'll have a discussion, larger discussion with all the presenters. Uh, I think now, for now, can you just, uh, you know, uh, uh, tell us about the experiences that you're mentioning that eight years back, you know, the Asian Development Bank and its representatives were there at Longku. So can you begin from there and we will take the questions at the very end. Means, ma'am, at that time, there was not a question too much, ma'am. At that time, they put only one question. Hello? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. At that time, they put only one question. Because most of the local affected people, they don't know what is the environment also. Mm. That is the main reason at that time. They don't know what is environment because they don't have a tiny uh, knowledge about the environment impact. But mm. in this present situation, we have found that the social, the economic, the religious, and the cultural lifestyle is going down and down. Mm. So at that time, only for one hour or two hours, at that time, uh, the meeting was conducted. And at that time, there was no resource person also. Hmm. Hello? Yeah, yeah, you're audible. Uh, at that time, I was only, uh, I was at that time presented only for five minutes and 10 minutes. So I don't know the details about the, the discussion, but people tell me about the eight years ago that if that happens, it's happened like this, it's been like that. The people say, Generally, I think the local affected people will know the details of that meeting, ma'am. I think Dennis Hanse is there. I think he will know. And plus Ajit Hangcho also, he will know. Hello? Yeah. 
Okay, but uh, all right. No, Dinesh actually, Dinesh uh, has uh, left the meeting. He was here at the beginning, but then due to uh, uh, the uh, internet connectivity issues, I think he's exited. Anyway, he said that he'll, he'll try and join us again. So we'll hear from him later. Uh, can you share with us, like, you know, so what is going on in uh, Longku now? At present, the construction is going on, ma'am. Construction is going, going. There is still, we have lots of demand. Number one points, compensation. Number two, the job facilities. But they are not giving me the fair enough. So that is the present situation is going on. But it's still 179 left out people are there to get the compensation. But they did not take any responsibilities. Hello. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, anything else further that you'd like to add? Or uh, uh, if Ajit is there, Ajit, both of you can uh, speak together. Is Ajit there with you? Ajit is not there, ma'am. Uh, okay, he, no, he was there the earlier. Uh, okay. Because mm -hmm. like all this information, we you have to come to the, on the uh, you have to come on the spot, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You will not come, then we will not give the detail because most of the uh, the details it is with uh, the affected association, El uh, Kepapa uh, president and secretary. All the details they have. Agreed. Agreed. Hello. Yes. 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 Because they could not give us the details information about the areas uh, ego uh, agreement and uh, about all this present situation uh, scenario also. Because I'm just a social worker and just I'm a teacher. So they did not, they did not give me any details about this. But mm -hmm. the local affected people told me about this situation uh, at, at the current situation. They told me about the problems. Okay. So, These are the problems, ma'am, going on in the present scenario. So to get all the information, you have to come to the Longku area. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but the local affected people ask me the questions about that one, the compensation. And number two, the central effort station was, the central effort station is directed to the revenue village. So in this situation, what we have to do, you just ask the questions. They told me yesterday, I just uh, interact with them. They told me to ask these questions, what they will do and what, how they will help us. They asked me the questions about this. Um, okay. Hello. Yes, yes. Uh, so what is the, uh, uh, regarding uh, the environmental, uh, since, uh, no, what are the changes that you have been seeing there, like since the project began? I mean, now I think the project is, uh, or it's already started. I think they have already begun. Uh, so what are the changes that you have seen over the years? Like that you have personally, I mean, I know that uh, the local residents out, I mean, you're also resident there, uh, but I suppose that you've been working elsewhere for a certain period of time. However, like when you go back home, so what are the change in, uh, like changes, environment or uh, livelihood and other like everyday issues that you are facing because of the, uh, you know, the project, the hydroelectric project and the construction work that has begun. What are the changes that you've been seeing? Can you let us uh, know a little bit more? I do not find any uh, changes, ma'am. They are still hoping for the 179 uh, affected people compensation. And plus they demanded the land also. Mm -hmm. But there is no land. Mm -hmm. The two things they are demanding is still at the present situations. They, there is no changes, ma'am. Still, construction is going on, but 
I don't see that there is any changes. Okay, so people are like uh, the uh, the people there, like you are saying. What you mean to say is that they lack awareness. Like at the very beginning, the way you pointed out that uh, when the uh, uh, people from uh, the representatives and the environmental engineers uh, who arrived from the Asian Development Bank when they came, and then the people did not have awareness about what exactly is environment and what kind of changes that the project could bring. So they did not have any idea. That's what you are saying. And okay, yes. uh, so yeah, and even now, most of the people are the local populace is worried about the monetary compensation, which has also not been sanctioned as of yet. Or uh, what is the status of the monetary compensation at least? Do you have any idea with regards to that? I don't have a details information, but mm -hmm. still 179 slept out, affected people are there. Man. Okay, okay. They're still fighting for their compensation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and the central effort station, that is a central reserve forest, they diverted to the revenue village. But okay. the two villages, uh, two villages diverted, that is uh, Thotolongku village and Tortelangsu village. That is means the revenue village, man. But they, mm -hmm. are, they are not getting the compensation. Not a single amount okay that is the present situation they are still fighting for their composition they are still fighting for their land also because the central effort stations diverted to the revenue uh, village so no one taking the initiative man that is the main reason mm -hmm. and still the president and the secretary also they are not working properly in such issue mm -hmm. So a lot of awareness has to be raised. I mean, that is the primary work that has to be done regarding the impact of the project. That is what you're saying. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Because okay. they don't know the meaning of environment, ma'am. They don't know this, the meaning of social economy. They don't know about the culture also. Because mm -hmm. lack of education, ma'am. Plus, yeah. they don't know the activities they don't know the activities of the working style, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, agreed. And I found that. Uh, All right. Um, uh, so, uh, is uh, uh, Ajit has not joined again, and uh, even Dinesh uh, from uh, Karbi Students Association, I, I think he's not been able to rejoin the uh, meeting today. Um, so I suppose uh, we'll wait for them for some time. In the meantime, what we can do is like, uh, uh, I think the audiences here know that uh, the Master Scholars League to uh, celebrate World Environment Day to, uh, 2021. We also have, uh, we also conducted a photo exhibition competition, the results of which are out. And I guess, uh, We'll hear from you. I think we can have further discussion. And then in the meantime, we'll also wait for Dinesh and Ajit if they are able to rejoin us. I think in the meantime, what we can do is announce the results of the photo exhibition competition. Right? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mohan Singh. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, shall I continue then? Kapil, uh, I do have a slide, but uh, Kapil, do you have the slide with you? I think you can start with the presentation regarding the prizes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, Please shall continue. I show Please the continue. other? Uh, shall I show all the slides now itself? Yes. Yes. So okay. Kapil Kemprai and Bimisa Kersa, both of them members of Dimasa Scholars League, have uh, conducted. They were the coordinators of this photo exhibition competition, and Kapil is here with us to announce the results of the photo exhibition competition. Thank you so much, Kapil. 
Uh, yes, ma'am. I'll be just searching the. Yeah, please proceed. Yes. I think I won't be able to present from my phone. Uh, it's not. Uh, if you share the screen, then or. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I wish everyone a very happy World Environment Day today. And um, here, um, the DSL have organized the photo exhibition competition. Uh, which, uh, which this is the poster for that particular competition, which was circulated amongst the general masses uh, through social media platforms. And we have received uh, some entries for that, uh, quite many entries for that, which I will show to everyone. Uh, if you see this slide, then um, here uh, we have the judges for the uh, photo exhibition competition. The judges were uh, selected and then uh, they were sent the images without disclosing personal informations of the participants and um, to maintain uh, fairness in the competition. So I have sent them the pictures for evaluation and marking. And uh, the first judge we have was um, Mr. Newton Langthasa. He's a director in the Masa music and film industry. And he also works in Arunachali, Karbi, Boro, Assamese music. Uh, but mainly he focuses on uh, the Dimasa music and film industry. Uh, some of his notable works are Hamjauma Gibi She, the movie, then Asimus album like Moram Bukut, and Kwaish, a love story, which is from Tripura. And uh, the second judge which we have is Mr. Dipankar Mek. Uh, Dipankar Mek um, is well known established for photography and uh, is an indie filmmaker. So, um, Based on the gradings which were provided by the two judges, we have tallied the marks and we got the uh, final results. However, before going through that, um, I would like to exhibit the photographs. So this was uh, on your right side uh, top. If you see on the screen, this was the first picture. Uh, this was made entry number one by W. Reshmi Singh. She's from Assam University, Silchar. And uh, I have written the caption that uh, she has sent for the pictures attached. Then the second picture is also by uh, W. Reshmi Singh from Assam University, Silchar. This is the third entry. The third entry is also from W. Reshmi Singh, Assam University, Silchar. And the fourth entry is by Rituraj Kakoti. He is from University of Science and Technology, Meghalaya. Next, we had the entry number five by Rituraj Kakoti, University of Science and Technology. Then uh, we had the next entry uh, number six by Nayandip Kalita. He is from Veterinary College, Guwahati. Next, number seven was by Bharat Diman. He is from Kurukshetra University, Chandigarh. And the next picture is also by Bharat Diman. He is uh, from Kurukshetra University in Chandigarh. And the next entry, number nine, is by Dejna Daulagufu, University of Delhi. And the 10th entry was made by Khasmai Dao Hagjer, Dispur Law College, Kohati. Next entry, number 11, was by Dejna Daulagufu, University of Delhi. And number 12 was by Khasmai Dao Hagjer, Dispur Law College, Kohati. Next, number 13 was by Dejna Daulagufu, University of Delhi. Number 14 was by Bharat Diman, Kurukshetra University, Chandigarh. Next, number 15 entry was made by Raj Lakshmi Kashyap from Assam Don Bosco University, Guwahati. Number 16 entry was also made by Raj Lakshmi Kashyap from Assam Don Bosco University, Guwahati. Entry number 17, 
also was made by Raj Lakshmi Kashyap, Assam Don Bosco University. Entry number 18 was made by Bulbuli Kemprai from Vivekananda Vidya Bharati College, Guwahati. Number 19 was also made by Bulbuli Kemprai, Vivekananda Vidya Bharati College, Guwahati. Number 20 was made by Sneha Longmailai, University of Delhi. Next entry number 21 was made by Hemshringdao Bathari from Haflong. Now these were the many entries that we have received for the competition over a short duration of four to five days uh, till the last entry was taken yesterday. And um, we are all very thankful to the participants for their interest in this particular exhibition and for sending in their entries. In fact, we are elated to receive so many entries from uh, states out uh, from states that are uh, not within the naughty circle. So we are extremely thankful to that. And then uh, we received the marks being tallied. And then after that, uh, the winners were declared as the following. The first prize was won by Rituraj Kakoti from USTM, University of Science and Technology. Congratulations on winning the first prize. Then the second prize was won by W. Reshmi Singh from Assam University, Silchar. And the third prize was won and shared by two people. Uh, the first one is Bharat Diman from Kurukshetra University, Chandigarh. And the second is Bulbuli Kemprai from Vivekananda Vidya Bharati College, Guwahati. So these are the winners of the photography competition and we will be contacting the winners uh, via email and other contact means shortly. So please stay tuned with us. And thank you all for uh, taking part in the competition. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much Kapil. Uh, we are really great. The Master Scholars League is really grateful to all the participants. Congratulations to the winner, uh, winners, and of course uh, we are uh, uh, very grateful to the judges, uh, Sri Newton Langthasa and Sri Dipankar Mesh for giving their valuable time and doing this very extremely difficult job of judging all these photographs and uh, uh, you know uh, at that to on such short notice. Thank you very much, and congratulations to the winners once again we'll be sending out the prizes and certificates to you as soon as possible at the earliest thank you so much uh, in the meantime uh, can we take some questions and qu queries comments uh, from the audience to our presenters they can the audience can unmute themselves and ask your questions or else uh, uh, you can write the questions in the comment box in the chat section and uh, I'll be glad to read them out to the presenters. Dinesh um, and uh, Dinesh and uh, 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 Ajit have not been able to rejoin us. So uh, we can, uh, yeah, there was someone, I think, uh, uh, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question directly. Good afternoon to all. I'm Dejna. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, Dejna. Yes, you are audible. Uh, okay, so I just wanted to say that uh, my uh, I've been working on my own uh, paper, which is uh, based, which is uh, which talks about industrialization in Umrang. So, so today's topic is very much related to what I've been working on. And uh, I just want to uh, I just want to say uh, that uh, uh, I really value the testimony of uh, Mr. Uh, Mohan Singh, and I I am really sorry that um, you're you're in the position that you are right now, and being a, a member of an indigenous community myself and also working uh, on this project at the same time. I just wanna talk about my own experience in the field. Although I didn't work on uh, the Kapili project, I visited the Dalmia cement factory, uh, which is in uh, Umranso. And luckily I, I 
got access uh, into the factory and i could see the mines and um, speaking to the public public relations officer there uh, to be honest i did not know much about anything like prior to my visit to umrang so but once i started speaking to people and especially um, representatives of the industries uh whatever they said was uh, was very uh was very insincere to me because uh i've grown up i've grown up in the district and i've grown up around nature and seeing the open mines and seeing the uh seeing the destruction honestly was very uh sad and about uh, compensatory efforts when i first heard about compensatory uh, efforts from the mouth of the public relations officer that was the only thing that uh, that uh, kind of um, re relieved me and uh, the thing about compensatory efforts is they will never be proportionate to the loss but uh, this is what uh, this is what we have right now and from my research i found that uh, the kampa fund uh, which is uh, which is part of uh, uh, which is part of any industrial project on indigenous land that involves cutting down of forests and other resources it is not a good uh, way of protecting nature because uh, it involves well uh, like of uh, value valuation of forests which is not um i mean which is not um, appropriate because the criteria for valuation is suppose carbon sequestration and flagship species species it does not involve the um loss of culture or um uh, like important traditional values and way of life so compensatory efforts are not uh, i don't think they will ever be proportionate to the loss but if if that is what we have i think uh, the negotiation should be uh, negotiation and the actual effort should be along the terms set by the affected people so uh, to answer uh, mohan singh sir's query about what can we do about this in my humble opinion and i haven't done much but i think it will be useful to uh, i mean go through other case studies uh, of other uh, struggles around india so i've been studying about the niamgiri struggle that actually resulted in the winning of the case by the dongra kon people of orissa so going through these case studies that uh, are happening around the country will give us perspective as to uh, what are our options and what are our rights another thing that would help is like to organize ourselves and um talk to people in academia and talk to people uh i mean who are well versed with how corporate policies work and who are involved with the government uh these are two ways that i think we could go forward that's that's what i wanted to say thank you Uh, thank you dejna that was uh, you know i mean uh, uh, i hope uh, that uh, i mean i agree to what you said about regarding i mean uh, at this juncture uh, i know that compens the compensation itself will never be proportionate and uh, it will never be enough but then uh, yeah like uh, mr mohan singh pangcho also pointed out i think even that is not being taken care of and a, and a lot of times like there is no awareness among the local people also because i think uh, uh, yeah the uh, the larger uh, the corporate laws and i think all i mean that regard that uh, that requires so much uh, uh, it's a long long battle at the end of the day and uh, Uh, the i think it has to be the driving force of this battle have to be the local people and for that a lot of awareness generation
affected. Like the case you pointed out of the Niamgiri Hills also. I mean, it, it that was, uh, I, yeah, what, whatever little I know of the Niamgiri also, right? I mean, there also the people have been, uh, 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 they have employed all this constitutional means and they have em employed uh, legal, uh, 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 you know, uh, the uh, processes and everything. And uh, I think they have been successful. Uh, I think, yeah, we can learn a lot of lessons from them also. We can get a lot of perspective from them. And I think what uh, even uh, Josephine pointed out, uh, all this, um, I think a lot of uh, yeah, awareness can be brought about regarding the planetary boundaries that she mentioned or uh, the ecosystem services. But yeah, I think a lot of groundwork has to be done by uh, the civil society and the larger, uh, you know, there are a, a lot of people, like-minded people who believe in protecting ecology, not for, uh, for like, you know, for sustainability, for uh, the future, gen for the sake of the future generations. I think all these like-minded people have to come together, but the beginning has to be I think somewhere raising awareness regarding it. And then, yeah, we organize ourselves and then we work together. I think that is the solution I see. Uh, I hope that uh, I, uh, uh, Mohan Singh uh, agrees with me. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, we'll have to uh, talk to him regarding that. Uh, any, thank you so much again, Dejita. Any further uh, like co comments or queries? I think if anybody wants to add to what Dejna pointed out, uh, uh, yeah, I think your comments and queries are welcome because uh, we had uh, Dinesh and as well as uh, uh, Ajit who were supposed to present, but they have not been able to rejoin. So we'll take a few more comments and we'll take a few more uh, queries and then uh, I think we can uh, close today's discussion. Hello, uh, hello everyone. This is Sivraj. I'm a, I'm part of BSL. And yeah, uh, one thing that I was discussing with uh, David also a little while ago was that uh, I just had this question in mind of like how much reliable are these sources that we are taking to understand the impact of uh, impact on environment of those places. Like uh, whatever uh, sources, whatever data that we are citing are. Uh, in a way presented by those people only who are involved with the uh, project as far as I know and and those people and like uh, uh, many people in this uh, discussion have been saying it that the, if the project has started uh, of course the people uh, who are involved in it will take it uh, further on so uh, I just want to know the experience of uh, uh, Josie's experience like you have worked in other uh, parts of our country as well, Tamil Nadu, I guess. And uh, how much, uh, like, uh, what do you think? How much are these uh, sources reliable? The sources that are being produced by those organizations only who are involved in, uh, you know, involved in project like this. And and if your thoughts are same as mine, like it's not that much uh, reliable. Then uh, what can be the correct way to, you know, uh, to to uh, to gather uh, data, reliable data, which are actually uh, reflect reflecting on the ground so that's my question uh, it, it can be addressed by anyone but uh, yeah so that's it um i'm happy i i was going to respond in the chat um but also i'm i'm sure that david and others can probably speak to this and any other person listening as well it sounds like you're all across it more than i am but i think there i agree there are a lot of um data gaps and it seems as though the data is presented in the way in the best way that the project can be approved so even if there is access to the data they won't make an effort to present data that might put the project at risk so for example um the project is in a very high risk rating for the for being impacted by climate change um, risks, but that's not really discussed in the EIA. Um, so yes, I I agree, and that was a concern that I had. Um, in terms of how to address the the data gaps, um, I know in the um, integrated environmental assessments 
there are guidelines around how to address data gaps. Um, but I guess when it comes to big organisations that are kind of pushing their own agenda, it might be a bit more challenging. Um, let me have a look and see. So I guess the data collection is a pretty kind of resource intensive thing um, to do. So it's about, I guess, collaboration with um, civil society and community groups um, to fill those data gaps, for example, around biodiversity and things like that. But I think um, even if the data is there, if a project, if they want to push the project, then um, I don't see why they would present data that's going to try and stop a project from going ahead, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts on it at the moment, but I'm also very new to this, so. Yeah, I think this can be answered by any other uh, members also, Dejina or uh, or anyone. Uh, like, uh, I just, like, uh, I think, uh, the stake among all the stakeholders, the community over there, I think they can, uh, they, they, if they are being provided with some tools or, you know, ways of how to, you know, see or assess things, I think uh, that will be uh, like more beneficial, of course, uh, provided the uh, education level and all those awareness things that uh, many people have mentioned of, the, of that place. Uh, I don't know how much, uh, you know, possible that is, but Still, I think if the local community can be provided with tools that you all were mentioning of how to assess these environments, you know, maybe with some uh, documentation like photographs or, you know, th I think those can be a way or if there are some like you guys are from this uh, environment and ecology background. So I think you guys will be able to, you know, uh, tell us the details of any uh, ways to measure or uh, that the community can community over there can use so that they can speak for themselves in a way. So yeah, that was my thing. I think yeah, I'm 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 happy that you all joined and I'm really happy with everyone uh, sharing their experiences and stories. Also everyone conducting it. Thank you so much. That's it from my side. Yeah. I agree uh, with the uh, Shivraj and uh, yes, so the point that you mentioned regarding uh, providing the tools to the local community in, uh, you know, so that uh, they understand the uh, gravity of the problem, right? So because even uh, in my last discussion with Dinesh as well as Ajit, uh, and uh, in fact, with um, uh, Mr. Mohan Singh Pangcho, what was pointed out was like, which he has also like said at the very beginning of his uh, presentation, that the people lack uh, even a like simple understanding of what the what uh, consists, uh, you know, what the environment consists, what ecology is, and all that. So I think, uh, uh, and he, I, I remember it was uh, Sri Mohan Singh Pangcho who said like, you know, what he'd like us. Uh, like of us to do is to if we if we as a team could visit all these areas and then like talk to the local community out there and if we could show them documentaries of uh, you know of the extreme environmental degradation that has happened due to such projects being taken like you know happening in other parts of the country or other parts of the world and uh, even like success stories as well uh, like the case of the Niamgiri or what is the uh, or like you know for that matter uh, the uh, Narmada, uh, you know, Andolan and all that. I think sharing all the stories, you know, educating, I think that should be the first, uh, uh, you know, uh, first uh, thing that uh, any uh, individual or any organization who would like to help out should undertake. So probably, uh, yeah, I think that that should be done somewhere. I think we can begin with that. And uh, uh, the people in the audience who are here, I uh, I hope that, you know, I mean, you take this message, uh, you know, uh, uh, disseminate this message as much as possible regarding the situation of the local communities, 
who are being affected, the villages, like, you know, who are being affected by the lower uh, hydro, uh, Kopili hydroelectric project and uh, what are the things that we can do? I mean, what measures we can take to uh, resolve all the problems that the people are facing? Because like, uh, like it's been pointed out by all the presenters, the problem seems local, but the impact of it is obviously global. And anyone who uh, cares about sustainability, about future generations, we should understand the gravity of the problem so and find solutions. So that is what I think uh, uh, if we don't have uh, any further comments, then... Uh, Raki, can I just comment? Yeah. Raki, yeah. Uh, just, yes, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, Rex, yeah, please continue. Yes. Uh, it's please. not a question, but uh, it's just uh, a few, uh, you know, observation or just sharing my thoughts. Uh, I think yeah, what you said and then uh, Joseph's uh, address, there is a gap between what uh, the data, scientific data tells us and what the government uh, data tells us about. And, uh, you know, uh, how do we address this? This is, uh, I think, a bigger question on, uh, uh, and, and I think uh, uh, we need to address uh, the elephant in the room. That's uh, what, so uh, many times these uh, building projects are uh, uh, presented or uh, creates a sense of, you know, improvement or, uh, uh, you know, bringing improvement in, in, uh, in the certain, you know, areas or uh, region. And uh, its environmental impacts are not being told. So uh, I agree with uh, what Raki said that we need uh, much uh, uh, awareness to spread at local level. Also, uh, Desna was pointing out the case of Urisa, and uh, I I wanted to draw attention uh, not far from. Uh, in, in fact, uh, in the area we have this uh, uh, few years back when all the Massa Student Union has filed a petition against the illegal red hole mining, and the National uh, Green Tribun uh, Tribunal has uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, um, pass, in fact, in favor of uh, the the Massa Student Union, um, banning and 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 also issuing this kind of legal notice to the uh, to all these companies, uh, mining companies, and um, so I I, I think uh, we we have uh, some examples within you know within nearby Umrangso and uh, uh, not uh, <clears throat> not far from uh, the Mahasau itself, uh, the bordering of. Uh, say, Jandia, uh, Jandia Hills, uh, the issue of uh, red mining. So we can take an example from this and uh, may, maybe aware of our, uh, uh, you know, uh, this uh, uh, civil society and uh, uh, environmental protection group uh, to, to also, you know, uh, can be, we can, uh, you know, uh, similar take this kind of action when uh, there is uh, much, uh, uh, evidences of uh, environmental you know destruction so we have some uh, um, um, we have some examples from in fact uh, uh, this kind of example that uh, we can see uh, so um, uh, so uh, I, I think that that's what uh, I wanted to you know uh, comment on this can I can I say something yeah sure uh, sure dr. Uh, Watari yeah Please, uh, Thank you. Uh, I'm not an environmentalist, nor am I an environment activist. Uh, but I have been listening very uh, patiently, and all the discussions that have happened here is very, very informative. I'm really enlightened by so many things listening to you. Uh, but I must say one thing that I would like to congratulate the Massa Scholars League. This is probably the first time we are speaking about uh, the impact of Heidel project that is being done in the Mahasau district, uh, Kopili Heidel project, upper and lower both. Uh, nobody has publicly talked about it. I don't remember when this lower project came up. I don't remember seeing any public notice for any notice for public consultation. Uh, I don't know how it happened, but then of course, uh, being someone from that community, affected community, I did know that something of that kind was happening at that point of time. And I, 
even though I didn't know much about uh, hydel projects and their impact, environmental impact, I did try to speak to a few people at that point of time. And from that, what I know is that one thing uh, for your information, uh, you know, in case of Kopili project, both the upper and lower, what we have is that uh, a case of uh, case of displacement, double displacement, in a sense that there were people who were displaced at the first phase of the project in 1970s. And they were relocated <clears throat> somewhere in the downstream. And now they are going to be affected again with this lower project. So I think I know this, uh, I, I remember somebody telling me that I don't know exactly who it was. Maybe I can look up at my whole diary, I'll find out. But <clears throat> Such a tragic case that nobody actually talks about uh, the impact of Kopili project in a somewhere. Uh, so many, you know, protests have taken place regarding the lower Heidel, lower, lower Suansuri project and other projects. Uh, partially, I think we are also to be blamed for that because what I know is that uh, Okhil Gogoi from the Krikok Mukti Hongram Committee. I think he was also at one point of time visited the Mahasau and he wanted to be, you know, he wanted to bring forth the issue of this lower Kopili project. Uh, but I don't think so. He didn't get a very good response from the local people. Uh, probably also because what many of the uh, presenters and commentators here have talked about the lack of awareness among the local people. That is also one of the reason um, <clears throat> I remember talking to one of the person who was part of the project affected people and fighting for uh, compensation. I tried to engage with him probably four or five years back. Uh, but as uh, someone said in the presentation, they are more concerned about the compensation part. So, uh, and like, like again, it is repeated here that even the compensation part is also has not come through. So that is a, that is very uh, unfortunate. And I think uh, uh, like just Josi said about the redressal mechanism with the ADB, uh, we can also look for alternative redressal mechanism like uh, Rex has just said, we can talk to, we can take recourse uh, to legal recourse uh, wherein the affected people have not received uh, proper compensation as promised. Uh, as for the environmental and assessment, I know that this has, this has always been a very shoddy work. This has been a shoddy work in many other cases in, uh, in many other cases in Northeast India, for example, Lower Swansuri project. That is a very, very shoddy work. Many uh, people, many scholars, many environmentalists have already Shown, shown that even in case of lower Kopili project, it is the WEPCOS who carried out the environmental impact assessment study. And uh, for the information of everyone, WEPCOS is part of the Ministry of Water Resource. So it is the same, I mean, uh, the, the group that is carrying out study on the environmental impact is part of the, you know, government that is going to execute the problem, uh, the, the project. So we know that it can never be, data can never be, uh, uh, it is always manipulated. So all these problems are there, these, uh, these loopholes can be, these flaws can be highlighted once again. But as of now, I think what is important is to go around meeting the local people, raise the level of awareness and do something about it. Because if we don't do that now, I, I think we are in a present and clear, clear danger because just recently I got to know that even oil is moving into our district and give, uh, looking at the uh, last year's incident in <clears throat> Dibru Soikwa Reserve Forest, what happened where ONGC itself is illegally carrying out oil extraction. So, you know, uh, if this kind of things happen in our district, we can well say that our community is doing forever. So at least someone, somewhere, somebody has started this thing. And I hope that the whole thing uh, does not stop here, stop here. It should move on. 
and we should have multiple level of consultations from project affected people to the experts. We have person like Josie here. We can help, we can take their help, their expertise, and we should think about moving forward. And um, we also, our case is very, very unique because we are also you know, under a, such an admi administrative arrangement, which is very unique to other places like Nyangiri and others, their administration, local administration. Our local administrative setup is, set up is totally different. So we also need to take into all this uh, into consideration. And I think that uh, this this uh, strength is on our side, given this whole yeah. legal constitutional mechanism that uh, is there in place. So I think uh, I, make it, I, can, I should not prolong it. We have been uh, listening for a long time and I, I'm also more interested in listening to others. So with this, I thank once again for organizing this talk and I wish all of you uh, all in Women's Day. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Adautam. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, uh, I mean, you raised a lot of uh, very important uh, uh, issues. And uh, I mean, the, regarding the double displacement, I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, we have to talk about that also. Uh, so how many more displacements does it take for us to actually uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, realize to understand in and also, uh, yeah, regarding uh, yes, regarding uh, the uh, yeah six schedule arrangements. Yes, that that's there. I think uh, we have to discuss that also. Perhaps we can take that up for another discussion. And uh, you know, since we are uh, this, both the districts, uh, Karbing Long as well as the Mahasau, so we are administered under six schedule provisions. So obviously, it will be different uh, than other tribal areas uh, where such projects are coming up. So that has all that also has to be factored in, as well as I think uh, even last year there have been further changes to the environmental uh, impact assessment. Uh, uh, you know, so uh, that uh, uh, law. I think we have to look at that also. I think uh, a, a whole new perspective has to be brought in. I think uh, the presenters today have uh, 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 given us the, uh, uh, let's say, I think given us ideas as to where we should begin. So, and then as uh, uh, Mr. Mohan Singh Pangcho pointed out, I think, you know, he actually stressed, I mean, because I was talking to him and he's a resident of the uh, village that is going to be affected, that is already affected. So he keep he kept talking about, and also the other, uh, uh, you know, uh, participants who could not join us today, like uh, Dinesh, Mr. Dinesh Hansi of the Karbi Students Association or Ajit Pangcho. So they consistently uh, spoke to me about how we have to raise awareness. And I think uh, somewhere a beginning has to be made. Um, I think uh, if we, if anybody can, if anybody would like to uh, add, maybe we can take another comment or perhaps we can stop the discussion, close today's discussion here. Um, anything else any, uh, anyone wants to add? Okay, so I guess we are done. Uh, okay, then I think we'll close today's discussion, but uh, we hope that this is not the, uh, I mean, as Dr. Uh, Bathari pointed out that, uh, yeah, this is the first time that uh, such a discussion is even taking place on uh, the lower Kopili hydroelectric, the Kopili hydroelectric project, but it should definitely not be the last. And uh, we hope that not just online discussions, I think we need people going out there, reaching out, to the local communities there and have I consultations. Yeah, and have consultations and see what solutions we can provide regarding uh, the problems that the local communities are facing and the larger environmental degradation yeah. that we are, uh, uh, you know, that faces us. So, uh, yeah, I think with this, we'll close today's discussion. Thank you so much for the presenters today. Thank you so much, uh, David. That was a wonderful and a very co comprehensive uh, data-rich 
uh, presentation that you made. Uh, thank you so much, David. And Josie, thank you so much for joining us from uh, Australia. And uh, you indeed gave us a lot of new ideas. And we hope to, uh, we hope that, you know, we can work together further and we'll have not just more discussions. You are always welcome to come down to Dimahasao and Karbing Long, you know, talk with the local communities out here. And, you know, let's see what we can do about this. And uh, uh, we are thankful to Dinesh Hanse and Ajit Pangcho. Uh, they are not, uh, they could not rejoin the discussion, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, they are always, I mean, uh, I, we already had discussions with them and uh, they were more than happy that we were having this discussion and uh, we, they also invited us so that you know we can uh, go there uh, in the, uh, the affected villages see for ourselves what is going out there or going on out there and of course I'm very happy uh, I, I'm very grateful to uh, Mr. Uh, Mohan Singh Pangcho for joining us um, you know it was on very short notice but you gave us your inputs regarding you know the lack of awareness that the people are uh, you know the, the that's there in the area and how the pertinent most pertinent uh, issue is of how to raise awareness among the local populace out there so that we can organize ourselves like Dejna pointed out and then come up with concrete solutions so that uh, you know I mean for our own uh, uh, well-being and uh, for the sustainability and for the sake of our future generations. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, uh, greetings to all of you once again. Best wishes for our World Environment Day. Hope all of you are safe and uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jutai. <laughs>